So next on our agenda is Kevin Reed and John Havel from uh, Northeast Neighbors. Okay, we're, we're tag TV. I'm going to talk a little bit about why we're here and what the arterial bridge is. And then Kevin's going to talk about why you're going to say, yes, this is the greatest thing <laughs> the county has come up with. Um, and I think, okay, you're going to show the yeah. graphic on the wrong end. But you guys can't see it, but I have black and white. Black and white. Yeah. Tell me if people out there are saying that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Thank you, Matt Brooks, for letting me know they're saying that. <laughs> So I'm sure some of you know, some of you don't know. Uh, the arterial bridge is part of a big planning project uh, to deal with all of the issues along the Beltline from uh, the Delta Interchange to River Road. And it's something that started uh, the process about 20 years ago. ODOT, or the Department of Transportation, City of Eugene, Wayne County, LDD, all of the sand and gravel guys lay into it. And then a lot of citizens, uh, Kevin was on that original committee, and so was I, and true was in Santa Clara. And they created a set of solutions, or proposed solutions, for all of the pieces along the belt line, again, from Delta through River Road. But it's too big a chunk to take on all of it, to be about 600 million or something like that. So they broke it into some parts. It can be done in. And the one we're really focused on is called the arterial bridge. And you'll see it on the right hand side of what you're looking at. And it's a bridge that crosses from Green Acres and then runs parallel to Beltline, slightly uh, north of it, across the river, and then comes into New World. Uh, a few things about that bridge it's going to be a City bridge, not a highway bridge. So it's going to be local traffic speeds rather than highway speeds. It's a city project, not a highway project. It will have dedicated and separate bike lanes and pedestrian lanes. It will also have the potential to be developed to create dedicated transit routes, which is a big deal in LTD's mind at some point. Uh, not initially, but it's going to be wide enough and parts will be landscaped initially, where it will then in the future be something to be adapted and created into a dedicated uh, transit route. But initially, it will be transiting with local traffic. And uh, OCA has estimated that uh, roughly every day, 17,000 local trips will go across. The arterial bridge trips that are now going on to the belt line. And so that's probably the big riveting number we we'll see with us. Um, that part of the equation, this is the right hand of the page, uh, has two approval steps, then we'll talk about that. Uh, it needs to first finish the plan. Uh, it's gotten all of the environmental approvals, everything is ready for finalizing the plan and purchasing the right of way. And the right of way won't be a surprise with the sand and gravel guys know it's coming. Um, th that first step of right of way and design finalization is a mere six million. Then the actual bridge itself is about 100 million. And Kevin's going to talk about where he's got all the money. So, so, not yet, not yet. Oh, not okay. Yet. We're just all excited about the <laughs> <our> money. <laughs> No, I, I, I wanted to say something about the, the left-hand side, which is what would be the next phase. In other words, if they, they need to move in phases and they would do the arterial bridge, but then the next phase would reconfigure Beaver and Hansifer in the division. And it's uh, another fairly big project, about 46 to 50 million. Um, and it's one that you guys might be interested in and, and it's something where it's not as high on their uh, priorities as the river road as, as the, the, the arterial bridge phase but it will be a huge transformation of, of, of that area in the, in the city um, 
Oh, okay, I'm not going to say more about that. I do want to say something Uda has said that however that left hand side gets configured, whatever decisions get made about upgrading uh, 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 and, uh, and putting roundabouts in, or whatever they end up doing, or all of the Oda will just hook up to it. And so we are very aware of something to be created independent of anything else that's done. So is everyone clear on what the arterial bridge is? Any, any questions just about the, what it is before we move on? Yes. I'm, I'm curious, you mentioned 17,000 trips a day. Yeah. What are the trips per day right now on uh, the belt line? Well, I, I, I can tell you, I have come out of that a couple of ways. I don't know the exact number, but here's another way of thinking about it. They estimate that in the peak hour, Belt line crowdedness, 25% of the trips will shift to the arterial bridge. Okay. And so, significant, significant improvement on the belt line. Um, those, the ODA has uh, projected what all those trips would be like and where they come from. And basically, they're all trips that are happening right now. It's just we're all doing them on the belt line. And now we'll have an alternative to the one year period over yeah. The 17,000 is who they predict would be using the new bridge. Correct. So that's yeah. way less than what's using the double bridge. Absolutely. So, and, and all of them coming from currently this is all my bridge. Yeah. yeah the, the effect, of, I'm just, uh, just checking, the effect of this basically would be to it removes traffic off the belt line and it, it gives a, a route through Green Acres Road to Northeast neighbors and Costco or whatever, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would also add uh, for emergency preparedness, having the secondary route across the river is necessary too. And, and that's exactly what my point is that, you know, the, the most difficult thing right now is to get an ambulance to and from during the peak hours is virtually impossible. They do not have a dedicated bus route right now over to Santa Clara and our area because they can't guarantee that they can get there on time. And so creating another uh, opportunity for us to have a safety corridor to get out of here in case something does happen that may be an emergency you know, capacity. And to be able to get service vehicles to and from the area is paramount. Mm -hmm. But first thing that's going to come out of everyone's uh, first question is going to asking me a lot is how much is this going to cost? It's going to be significant. It's going to cost about $110 million. And that, that that's a very that's an eye opener right out of the gate. But the lion's share of this is going to get paid for by ODA. We've been in conversations with ODA. I've been working with them for the past five years on this project. And they wanted everyone to believe that we're, well, gosh, we're supportive of this because it takes some of the pressure off the bell line. We just think it's a good idea. But remember, it's a, it's a city. It's a city road. Well, here's the thing. They have to build a secondary bridge while they do the upgrades and seismic uh, changes to the Beltline proper. So they have to put in this bridge anyway. But instead of it just being a bridge that's going to be temporary that they're going to remove at a later date, we want them to make it permanent. So Perfect. the lion's share is going to be, is going to be uh, brought to bear by ODOT. Some of the minor changes that we're going to ask for, such as the pedestrian traffic and the bike traffic and some of the little add-on additions, Mm -hmm. will be funded by the city, but 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 not to the great extent. I mean, the, the, the line share of the costs are going to be borne by ODA because it's going to have to be done by them anyway. We also um, wanted to make sure that this was going to be a road that was going to be neighborhood friendly, that the speeds on this road are not going to be Beltline speeds. These are going to be neighborhood connectivity speeds so that the people that are driving on this road don't have to worry about um, just the craziness that, that you see with the drivers on the Beltline. Plus, you know, we do have a new Winkle on our side of the, of the river, which we want to make sure that it gets an opportunity to be able to shop there. We have Costco, we have all these other services that we want to make sure are available to run. We have a brand new 14 acre park that was just dedicated and donated to the city of Eugene by the developers of the River Ridge um, of a complex over there. They donated um, the, the wetlands area as a park to the city of Eugene, which we really want to take advantage of. And so they started doing the facelift of that already. And there's also, um, an area within the outside of the city UGB, but inside, but on the on the river there, that they're also going to dedicate so they can go ahead and put the bike path 
all the way through along the river, which we're hoping that will connect to this bridge and be able to be a, a way in which you can get to and from this side of the bridge. But that, at this time, we, we don't have any way to get over to you guys' side. We have to go all the way down to the bridge down by towards Valley River to cross over to get over to River Road Tech area. And so it's a um, long ways. <laughs> I, I do yeah, I do have I don't know if you watch the bridge. Yes, correct. Correct. So this will give us another access point from there to, 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 to Santa Clara. Where we don't currently have. And so, um, who is opposing this? this Pardon bridge? me? Who is opposing it? Yes. Go ahead. There, there are people who oppose any money spent on roads. And there are people who especially oppose any money spent on highways. And they show up at meetings. We, we, we get these meetings too. But they show up at the meetings and speak very, very strongly against money being spent on projects like this. What about the Delta Sand and Gravel? How are they? Um, they're, they've been uh, involved in the whole planning and development process right from the upstart. So That's they, my grandfather's company. It's from this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, they've been very supportive and they know that, that we're going to be having to take a chunk of their land in order to be able to make this all work. And they're very supportive of that all happening. <laughs> They're going to benefit, and their their company that they know is going to benefit from this also. And John and I have um, spent the last few months uh, reaching out to the River Road Neighborhood Association, the Cal Young Neighborhood Association, and now the Santa Clara Neighborhood Association, and ours. And we've gotten full support from both Cal Young and from the River Road. And we had spoke with your board, and, and and that's why we're here tonight to talk to you about this. But I, what I really want to emphasize is that even though we have these naysayers, they they don't live here. And, and this is all about us creating an opportunity to take some of the pressure off of the transportation issues that are, are absolutely a nightmare for us on our side. Um, we have the most growth in the entire city and we have the least amount of money being spent on infrastructure. And I'm sure you guys are experiencing the same thing, but they kind of forget about us on this side of this side of the river. So what we're hoping to be able to do is do two things. Not only are we going to work really hard to get this bridge built and reach out to the decision makers at the state level and at the federal level, which we are working on right now. But we also want to take this opportunity because this is such a unifying topic for all of our neighborhood associations to be involved with, is to use this as a catalyst to come together and try to create some continuity and some consistency and, and, and work together on other issues that you guys may have that we can help bring our support towards and bring the River Road and Kelly Young neighbors so that we can get the attention of the city leaders. So that we have a voice now, a lot much larger voice and a much um, more effective voice when it comes to the decision makers hearing what our concerns and what our needs are. And I know you guys are going through your, your refinement plan update and stuff, and we would like to be very supportive so that we can help because we're going to benefit from whatever decisions are made over here and the benefits that come, we're going to reap the benefits too. And we want to be as supportive uh, as a neighborhood association as we can be on your behalf. And this, I think, will give us a, a much greater opportunity to get um, our concerns and our issues addressed when it comes to this, the decision makers in, in the city of Eugene. So I, I'm hoping that this can be that first step towards us being able to use this for a couple of different things. One, getting that bridge built, and then also creating this relationship where we can be very supportive as neighbors for all the neighborhood associations in our area. I, I'm thinking that the bridge will Which is what it is right now, with the on-ramp to the belt line. And so it's, it's congested very, I mean, it, it's worse now than what it would be if we had through traffic that was moving at neighborhood speed, not a belt line speed. So they, we, you're not going to have that parking lot backup of these people trying to get on to as an on-ramp onto the belt line. And it goes all the way past um, Market of Choice, all the way to the first stop signs there. In fact, it goes all the way past Co to Cobra Road. Yeah. I mean, it, it, during 5 and 8, it's backed up that far. So... 
I think this is really going to actually be more beneficial as far as taking the stress off of that. So I think the neighbors are going to be much happier. Plus the cars are going to be moving slower. Um, so I, I think in the in the long run, and for those that are concerned about the pollution and stuff and the and the amount of carbon not carbon dioxide going into the air, really with all those cars backed up for that long a period of time, they're sitting there idly trying to get onto the belt line. It's 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 a lot worse than if we were just had through traffic where the cars are moving to and from. And so hopefully that it'll it, you know, it's it's a partial fix. We know that there's a lot more that needs to be done to the belt line, but this is one step closer to us being able to see some light Still at the end of the tunnel. I don't know what that is, sorry. Kevin, um, piggybacking on what I didn't get that. Asked. Could you try again? Um, so you're you're projecting that the impact on Crescent, because I'm thinking Calion gets out of school and it does back up. Right. You're thinking that it will. Okay, I think I got yes, it. well, it'll, 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 it'll help with that. It, it won't yeah. completely alleviate it, but it will certainly it take a lot of the pressure off of it. Yeah, because the traffic will be moving much, much smoother going to and from rather than being backed up or just using it as an on-ramp to get onto the belt line. Yeah. Who got this model? I mean, they, they, they were asking this eight years ago in, in the meetings, and they modeled and said, basically, it's the same people making the same trip along right. Crescent, but yeah. instead of going onto the uh, belt line, they'll go across the arterial bridge. And so their expectation is it will not add to traffic along so we're asking for your support. Well, you got my support. Uh, I, I did have a query, and it's <laughs> but uh, in one of the original plans. Um, and this is probably going to be a, another project down the road if it's still in the works is there was the idea of making a secondary road from beaver street that went all the way up to uh wilkes uh on the back side of all the properties there is that still in the plans down the road sometime or has that been pretty much put off the board and you'll still be always well, that's riding the second phase. That, that re that re configuration of beaver and hunsaker and having that all reconfigured to run all the way out to uh, River Road. But he's talking about the Beaver Street extension and the Lake yeah. County, right. That is, I think that's off the table uh, yeah. because the can't, county can't justify based on yeah, state right. rules to put a, a road there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Appreciate it. <laughs> And the, and the other thing, that, I mean, the folks on River Road, what they were excited about was the fact that it, uh, by us having this conversation about this bridge, it'll take away from the conversation they were having about putting a bridge from Valley River over to River Road, which they are adamant about not wanting to see happen. And that, that is going to be the case. So, I, I think another concern is, though, is are there going to be improvements on Hunsacker to handle the additional traffic that's so great? The ODOT expects the uh, ODOT expects it not to create additional traffic on your side because most of that is you know there will be traffic that they could exit at division anyway and going on onto division. I, I'm not as clear in my mind right. about your guys' roads as, as I am about ours, but. The, uh um, I, I, I think I think that there's a mistake. Uh, if as soon as people realize they can get over to the Oakway area across that secondary bridge without getting on Beltline, it's going to create tra additional traffic on Huntsacker than it currently sees. Did you think it would get the uh, additional traffic? No, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, well, but you know the 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 traffic that would be using that anyway is uh, the people that were using that off ramp there to get home anyway, and so what you're doing is you're taking off the local locals off the Beltline and putting them on this road. And then the people that are doing the through traffic on the Beltline, we have a clear shot and we'll, and so you don't have that congestion problem of people trying to fight to get over or get off on that off ramp. I could see your, I could see your thinking there, but I think that the, um, there's a certain percentage of, of people that have been going down to River Road to get on Beltline, getting off of at River Road, and uh, just not realizing that that Hunsacker connection 
was an, another option. The traffic has increased as more and more people over. I've lived in the area here for the last 30 years and the number of people on that stretch has increased tremendously as people discover that's an easier way to uh, you avoid all the lights uh, at the uh, Beltline area that way. And so it's, it's a lot faster. And so when you're going to create. Also, I think that it's also going to straighten everything out from if you're looking at where Crescent is and you straighten that out to is that division on uh, the river division. It's going to be a straight shot down there across the bridge to that road. And nine times out of 10 people are going to go straight rather than to try to turn off and go down Huntsaker, I would assume, because you currently don't have uh, two lanes there like you would normally have with this with this bridge being put in. So it'll change the it'll change the uh, layout for that access point. So I don't know that you're going to get any more traffic going down Huntsaker versus what will go straight ahead and go right by Fred Meyer there. So I, I, I I'm just saying I'm just thinking that you if you go straight correct that that is a little wider, obviously. But also you have uh, lights. You go straight there. You have the light to get onto River Road. Then you have a light at Fred Myers. Then you have another light at the at the fire station. Then you have the last light at Hunsacker. If you go the Hunsacker way, no lights. People avoid lights. Thanks, John. Were there other questions for Kevin? So is the, yes, mm -hmm. is the bike pad uh, for sure, or is it a maybe? I it's, heard you kind of it's, it's not, it's not an option. It's built into all the plans for all the designs for it. Yep. Yeah. It's a crucial piece of it. And in fact, it would be a tough sell without it in transit. Because if it's purely auto, I'll be blunt. If it's purely auto, the city of Eugene is going to have a lot of trouble advocating for it. But the fact that it's yeah, that it would, yeah. It would, it would, well, and, and if they do, if they do the greenway development like they planned for the bike pass, we really this is a critical component of that to get us access to that. I do know that the uh, developers of the River Ridge are going to leverage the city by saying, you know, we'll donate that property to you. But you've got to give us a timeline as to when you're anticipating this development to go from their their property to to the uh, the to the connection there at at Beltline. So they want to know when is that going to get developed, and so uh, they were trying to use this excuse that there's private property in between there. Well, you know, it's time for them to get a commitment from the gravel companies and say, look, yeah, we'll go ahead and support that, and we'll help you develop that that path all the way to the. Valley River connection. So, are you thinking about a uh, roundabout where uh, uh, Green Acres hits at uh, Mackenzie? The city's looking at that. It's not something where they've made a decision and it's, it, it barely fits. Okay. I know, I know. We, it's we tight. pushed that one quite a bit with them, and, and it's something where they keep saying, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to looking at that, but they haven't. But there's some people in transportation that just are in love with roundabouts. That's their thing. But you know, you got to have a lot of land in order to be able to do yeah, two that's, lanes. That's, that's, a, that's a crazy intersection. Right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is there? Clarify: is the is the bike path first phase or second phase? First phase. It's, it's part of the, yeah. yeah it's, it's part of what, part of the bridge development for this is is yeah because that's one of the major components that we were really emphasizing. We want to have pedestrian access and bike access to the other side of the river. That's in paramount. I mean, and having a having a dedicated car lanes too is a good idea, but that's not the that's not really what the focus is about getting these two neighborhoods connected any way you can. So if it's pedestrian, bikes, bus, cars. Yeah, we are asking for a vote, I and mean, we don't get to ask for a vote. We're asking you guys to ask for a vote. <laughs> yeah. I even have a motion that we use for all the other boards. If I can be so bold as to give it to one of you that we can't be right introduced, and I'd be happy about that. I think this has to be. I uh, I'm counting the number of people. I think this has to be a board meeting, not a general meeting. We have Jerry and Matt. 
available on the computer right. as board members. But, but in terms of, in terms of, to be at a general meeting, it has to be more than 10, up to 10 people outside the board. It's just mm -hmm. residents. I don't think we have that. So mm -hmm. it, it has to be a board vote. Uh huh. And would that satisfy you at yeah, this point I mean, for it to yeah. be a, a board decision? So yeah. let's see. T Terry, are you willing to make the motion for John? <laughs> I move that we uh, motion to approve the Santa Clara Community Organization to support the proposed project. I can just read it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of constructing an arterial bridge that would cross the Willamette from Green Acres Road to the Santa Clara area. The bridge will be multimodal, carrying local traffic, transit, biking, and pedestrians. The city of Eugene and ODOT will work together to create a final design and to seek funding. I would like to come have a copy of that being the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a second oh, on, for Terry's motion? <laughs> he, he only wrote one word down. <laughs> Terry moves. <laughs> Is there a second? Do we have a second for the motion? Second. Gary, you can't second. You can't because it's a board decision, darling. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's she's on the board. board. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jerry Finnegan seconds. And so then Martha, do you have a question? Your hand is up. Oh, I just I just wanted to chime in with um, Don's comment about um, improvements needed to Hunsicker because we um, I, I use Hunsicker every day to come home, as do many hundreds of other um, drivers, and um, they're they. I think the city has already recognized that improvements need to be made to protect pedestrians because there was a pedestrian fatality on Hunsecker, um, I don't know, a year and a half ago um, due to heavy traffic and the lack of proper sidewalks. So um, it, I, I, I'm, I'm all for the secondary bridge. I think it's great, but I think, you know, you do need to uh, beef, beef up the side streets that, that those things are going to empty out onto. Thank you. Yeah. So point of just information, uh, Huntsaker is a county road and it's a county project to improve it. And they're, you know, it's in their queue. It's just not tomorrow. <laughs> mm -hmm. They don't have the funding for it, but they have done the design and the outreach and all the other things. Okay, so uh, any other conversation about the motion? Okay, so I, we're gonna take a vote. So all in favor of the motion, raise your hand or say aye. aye. So let's see, that's everybody on the computer and all board members here. So we're good, yeah. that's that. And we will um, we'll make sure that you have access to our website if we have all the information that will be there. And so uh, if you need us to come and talk to you or bring everyone up to speed or update you in any way, we'd be more than happy. And if we could be of any help to you and support you in any of you guys' endeavors, please let us know where, you know, I'll bring it to our board and we'll bring it to our neighbors and we'll, we'll give you this, we'll, we'll rally the troops. That would be great. So our board decisions then get um, reviewed by our general, at our next general membership okay. meeting. So we'll be inviting you back for a okay. general membership Absolutely. meeting to to, to review this and um, we'll be in touch. And if you okay. could keep us apprised of your Absolutely. search for funding and ways we can Absolutely. help. Absolutely. Did you have 120 million? <laughs> carrots, 120 million carrots. <laughs> so Kevin, is, do you have a separate website or is it on the Northeast? Northeast, it'll be the Northeast, yeah. Okay. John's really good about keeping that up to date, so. Thanks. 